This is one of multiple videos in my $100,000 home lab network series. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to configure link aggregation. We're gonna look at why you need to use link aggregation, and then I'll show you how to configure it on the switches in this topology. Now, you don't have to have equipment like I'm using in this example. I just wanted to show you what's possible with really interesting and exciting equipment. This network is too fast, has one gig, 2.5, five gig, 10 gig, 25 gig, 50 gig, and 100 gig interfaces. You don't need that. You can run an entire Aruba network on your laptop using GNS3. Use the link below if you wanna see how to do that. You can also use the links below to watch other videos in this series. Okay, let's get started. In this topology, I've got two links from my first 6300M switch to my core 8360. Also two links from this 6300 to the core 8360. At the moment, these links are configured as trunk ports. In other words, they are layer two ports, which means that spanning tree protocol or spanning tree will be blocking one of the ports. It does that to stop the loops in a ethernet topology. So as an example, let's have a look at the first 8360 switch in the topology. So here it is, show LLDP neighbors. You can see it's got two connections to a core switch, 8361. But if I type show spanning tree, what you'll notice is this port is blocking. We have a forwarding port and we have a blocking port. I'll use the LLDP command again so that you can see that port 49 is the root port and it's forwarding on the switch, but port 51 is the alternate port and that's blocking. So even though I have two connections here, 49 and 51, 51 is blocking. That port is actually not used for forwarding of traffic. It's as if the cable is unplugged. So that's a waste of bandwidth. What about the site? You'll see it's very similar. So 6302 show LLDP neighbors. Same ports 49 and 51 are connected to 8362. Show spanning tree. What you'll notice here, I'll make this slightly smaller, is that the ports will be blocking in the same way as the previous switch. So 49 is the root, 51 is blocking. That's an alternate port. That port is forwarding that port is blocking. No traffic is being forwarded across that link. Spanning tree has basically logically unplugged the cable. That's not entirely true. Some traffic such as LLDP, as you can see here, is forwarded through that link, but user traffic won't be. So if you try and send a large amount of traffic through the network, only one of the ports is being used. In this topology, 8361 is the root switch. I can see that by typing show spanning tree on that switch. And what you'll notice is spanning tree is enabled, but in this case, multiple spanning trees being used, not per VLAN spanning tree or something else, which you would find on a Cisco switch by default. These are Ruber switches, so they use industry standard protocols by default. This is the root switch, and that's the important piece. You can see the MAC address of the root is the same as the bridge ID. This switch is the root of the topology. So all ports on this switch are forwarding but ports on other switches will be blocking if they have dual links to the core network. So let's change that by aggregating the links together. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna bond these two links together using a link aggregation or lag, or if you wanna use Cisco terminology, a ether channel. We're going to create a link aggregation, basically logically join those together. So from a spanning tree point of view, it looks like a single port. Now it's good practice to shut the ports down before you make changes like this. So what I'll do on the core switch, show LLDP neighbor. These are the two interfaces on the core switch that we're gonna shut down for the connection to the access switch. So interface 1191, shut that down, and I'll do the same on the second one. Now we're gonna create a interface, and in this example, we want a lag or link aggregation interface. You can choose numbers from one to 256. I'll just use one in this example because it's my first lag and it's the only one that I've got. Do show run interface lag one shows me that the interface is shut down 
it is going to be a layer three interface by default. So I'm gonna disable routing. You can create what are called layer two or layer three link aggregations. In this example, because I wanna show you the difference between what we had before with spanning tree and what we have now, I'm gonna make this a layer two lag so that we can see what spanning tree does. Now VLAN trunk, in this example, I'm gonna allow all VLANs. It's good practice to prune your VLANs and only allow certain VLANs across the link. But for this example, I'll just allow all VLANs. Now, we're gonna use LACP, and the mode that we're going to use is either active or passive. One side has to actively initiate link aggregation. So it'll work if both sides are active and they're both trying to form a link aggregation, or it'll work with one side being active and one side being passive. But if you make both sides passive, they are not gonna form a lag. They are passively waiting for the other side to create the link aggregation. So if you said both passive, nothing's gonna happen. You're gonna wanna either make both sides active or make one active, one passive. For this link aggregation, I'll make both sides active and on the other one, I'll make one side active and one side passive. Okay, so that's been done now. So do show run interface lag one. What have we done? That's the configuration. I forgot to no shut the interface, so I'll bring that interface up. There's our configuration. Now we can go on to the individual interfaces and I can add them to the relevant link aggregation by using the command lag and the number. So those two interfaces have been joined to the lag. Now show interface brief. Those interfaces are down at the moment. I'm gonna configure the other side of the link. So I've configured this side. Now I need to configure this side and then I'll bring the links up. So on the 6300, it's connected to the 8360 on 1149 and 1151. Previously remember one of the ports was forwarding and one of the ports was blocking. So interface lag one. And basically all we're gonna do is copy the configuration from the core switch. So if we type show run interface lag one, that's the configuration we're gonna do here. No routing, VLAN trunk allowed all LACP mode. And in this case, again, I'm gonna set it active so they both negotiate. I'll no shut this interface. Interface one, one forty nine, lag one, interface one, one fifty one, lag one. So show run interface lag one. Okay, not sure why it's not showing the configuration. Let's try that again. But there's our configuration, same as the other side. On our ports, so show run interface one slash one forty nine. There's our configuration and fifty one. There's our configuration. Show LACP, and let's look at interfaces. We can see that the interfaces are down at the moment, but port 49 and 51 are part of the link aggregation. So on this side, interface 119 colon one, no shut that, and I'll do the same on the other physical interface. So show LACP interfaces. We can see that the interface is up on this side, it's active, so A being active, forwarding state is up, so back on the access switch, show LACP interfaces. State is active. We can see the port ID. We can see that the forwarding state is up. So now when we type show spanning tree, what you'll notice is lag one is the root and it's forwarding. You don't see port 49 and 51 in the output now because they are now part of link aggregation. So we've now configured link aggregation between these two switches. Next step is to do it over here. Now before I do that, I'll just save the configuration of my switches. Okay, so show LLDP neighbor. This is the second core switch. You can see it's got two connections to the access switch. Show spanning tree, all ports are forwarding. 
But on this switch, show LLDP neighbor, we've got two connections back to the core switch. But again, one port is forwarding, one is blocking. So interface lag one, doesn't have to be the same numbers. You could use different numbers if you wanted to, but I'll just use the same to be consistent here. Configuration will be very similar. No routing, VLAN, trunk, allowed all LACP mode. And in this case, I'll make it active. The other side I'll make passive so that you can see the difference. Now on the core switch, I'll copy the configuration and then I'll paste that on the second core switch. You don't have to use exactly the same lag number, but I'll just do that to keep it simple. So show run interface lag one. That's on the core switch. Interface 119 colon one, lag one, same on two, lag one. And actually, I'm not sure if I shut these interfaces down. So show interface brief. Did I actually shut those interfaces down? They're still up at the moment, according to this. So what I'll do is go onto the interface. I should have shut them down before I made my configuration changes. So show run interface lag one. That's the configuration of the lag. Interface 119 colon one. And that's the configuration. So let's configure the access switch as well. 1149, shut that down. 1151, shut that down. Interface lag one, no routing. VLAN trunk allowed all. LACP mode, and in this case, I'll make it passive rather than active. Interface 1149, lag one, 51, lag one. So I've put both interfaces into the lag. Now I'll no shut the interfaces. And then I'll go into the lag and no shut that. And then I'll do something similar here. No shut. No shut, interface lag one, no shut. And hopefully I didn't mess it up this time. So let's see what it does. Show LACP interfaces. You can see this one is active and it's up, up. On this side, show LACP interfaces. You can see this side is passive and it's up, up. So that's working. So show spanning tree, scroll down, you can see We've got a lag that's forwarding. We don't see port 59 and 51. Okay, so that all looks good. But the true test is, can we actually send traffic through the network? So command prompt, IP config. This is PC2, has this IP address. Can it ping PC1 through the network? And as you can see there, it can. We have configured link aggregation on these two links. So spanning tree, won't block one of those ports. We have full usage of both those ports. Now I say that, but you need to be careful because the load balancing is actually done on various options. So we can see our lag interfaces, but if I look at show LACP aggregates, you'll notice that this side is passive and it's done on layer three source destination address. So load balancing of traffic across the two links is actually done on layer three source and destination IP addresses. That means if traffic is sent from one host to another host, the same IP addresses will be used. So it'll actually only use one link. It won't use both links. So we won't get the usage of both uplinks if we only send traffic from one PC to another. It's an aggregate of traffic. So you'll have the total bandwidth if multiple devices are sending traffic across the network. So show interface brief on this switch as an example. We have an aggregate bandwidth of 50 gig. If we go to the core switch, show interface brief, aggregate bandwidth of this trunk is 50 gigabits per second. The individual links of 25 gig, but it's 50 gig in aggregate, and that's aggregate of multiple hosts sending traffic to multiple hosts. Again, if one PC sends traffic to one other PC, you'll only get 25 gig in aggregate. It's load sharing basically traffic across both links based on a hash of source and destination IP addresses. 
Okay, so there you go. That's how you configure link aggregation on Aruba switches. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal, and I wanna wish you all the very best.